If you're a regular here, you probably know that the majority of the world's cruise ships are sitting at anchorage points around the world in a state of warm layup. I've made a video about warm layup which you can check out here. But in a nutshell, while passengers and most crew are no longer aboard the ships, they are still operational, running on their own engines and manned by an onboard team including a captain, officers and essential crew. Keeping ships in warm layup costs cruise operators millions in fuel, maintenance and wages. Which begs the question, why don't cruise ship operators repurpose their cruise ships for other uses so they can make some money during the coronavirus pandemic? Cruise ships are often referred to as floating hotels, and in many cases they do share some similarities with land-based hotels and resorts. Restaurants, bars, lounges, swimming pools, and lots of hotel-style rooms make up the cruise and the hotel experience. But six months into the cruising shutdown, most international borders remain closed, but we are seeing more and more local tourism areas reopening, with many people flocking back to hotels and resorts to get a break during this difficult year. So why haven't we seen cruise ships opening their doors as floating hotels? I mean, who wouldn't want to spend an afternoon on board Queen Mary 2 and take in high tea, check out the new facilities on board P&O's yet-to-be-launched Iona, or ride the roller coaster aboard Carnival's new Mardi Gras? There are a number of roadblocks preventing cruise ships from being used as hotel ships, some of which are exacerbated by the pandemic. Firstly, many jurisdictions remain close to cruise ships, and gaining access to closed cruise ports is difficult at this time. Notable examples of this include all the ports in Australia and New Zealand, which remain closed to foreign flagged cruise ships. Not only does this mean that you can't take a cruise in these countries, but also that cruise ships aren't even allowed into the ports, so utilising them as hotel ships is out of the question here. But even in countries where cruise ships are still welcome, there are a number of hurdles to overcome before you can use a cruise ship as a hotel ship. Firstly, there is the issue of docking space, as well as the cost of docking the ship itself. Around the world, cruise ships are still reliant on ports for provisions, meaning cruise ships are still requiring access to ports. Space at port is always at a premium, Filling berthing locations with hotel ships would further impact the ability of ships in warm layup to access ports for provisions and personnel changes. Additionally, it is far cheaper to anchor a cruise ship off the coast than it is to keep it alongside, meaning docking fees for a permanently moored cruise ship is expensive. Speaking of costs, the cost to operate a hotel ship is extremely high and would definitely need to be taken into consideration before any viable hotel ship operation could be opened. It takes hundreds, and in some case thousands of people to run a cruise ship. The cost of operating a cruise ship is possible in normal times, as cruise ships never sail empty. Demand over the last 20 years has been high, and most cabins aboard most ships were occupied. So there was enough income to not only cover the expense of such a large operation, but also allow the cruise line to turn a profit. Demand also plays a role. The pandemic has impacted global travel, with many economies around the world in the worst recession since the Great Depression. Recessions bring with them a softening of travel demand, which is made much worse by the health concerns and the travel restrictions the pandemic brings. Sure, a laid-up cruise ship is unprofitable, and cruise lines are losing millions upon millions of dollars having their fleet laid up around the world, but an operational cruise ship that didn't have enough guests is also unprofitable. In fact, it would be even more unprofitable if it was fully manned as a static hotel with only a handful of guests on board. So, hotel ships would need to either operate close to capacity or significantly scale back the service and offering on board. Additionally, the various hotels and resort operators, many of whom are already struggling, would likely oppose any cruise ships opening as hotels in their geographical locations. All of this stacks up to a difficult business case to open a cruise ship as a hotel ship at this time. But there are a few exceptions. In fact, we can look to Hertegruten as one of the most notable exceptions during this pandemic. Norwegian brand Hertegruten has recently leased out two of its ships for use as accommodation ships, with both ships to be used as a base for the cast and crew of the new blockbuster instalment from Mission Impossible while they film in Norway. The specific use of these ships plus the agreed lease price, which would cover the costs for the cruise operator, and the closed community that would exist on board the ship, just with Mission Impossible production crew and cast, it would allow the cruise line to offer a safe and viable environment for those people living and working on board. In days gone by, passenger ships had been repurposed as hospital ships. This was commonplace during both World War I and World War II. 
So with the world going through a global health crisis, why haven't the large cruise ships been used as floating hospitals during COVID-19? In fact, this idea was floated early in the pandemic, with Carnival Corporation offering its fleet to governments worldwide as early as March 2020 for use as hospital ships to treat non-COVID patients. But this offer has yet to be accepted. The cost of refitting a ship, as well as the time it takes to do so, are likely two obstacles to this idea. Additionally, finding appropriately trained healthcare workers to run the ship as a hospital at a time where land-based hospitals are already stretched presents a major challenge for governments. During World War I and World War II, this was a different prospect, and governments around the world conscripted people, training them to become nurses and medics, which allowed hospital ships to become quickly crewed. Furthermore, in wartime, there was a need for a moving hospital that can sit close to a battlefield when the land-based infrastructure is either damaged or non-existent. During COVID-19, land-based hospitals have remained in operation, while the spread of the virus has moved faster than any ship could redeploy, making a hospital ship less viable in this scenario. As a side note, some governments, including the US, have specifically designed hospital ships which have been deployed to certain areas to help during the COVID-19 pandemic. Additionally, in Singapore, Star Cruises have been utilising two of their ships, the Superstar Aquarius and the Superstar Gemini, as accommodation vessels for foreign workers who have recovered from COVID-19. So a few ships have found a use in a healthcare role. Around the world, we have seen an influx of passenger airlines repurposing their commercial aircraft for use as cargo carriers. This has even seen the giant Airbus A380 find its first use as a cargo carrier. So why aren't some of the 300 empty cruise ships making a living carrying cargo during the COVID-19 shutdown. It is true that in the past, passenger ships were a major contributor to cargo transport. However, since the widespread adoption of containerization in the post-war era, cruise ships have not been part of the global freight network. Containerization allows for the efficient movement of goods around the world. Ports and transport infrastructure has been designed to accommodate containers in a way that simply could not be achieved on board cruise ships. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to an increase in demand for medical supplies, as well as a boom in business-to-consumer goods through online shopping. This quick turnaround freight has helped airlines create a business case for utilising empty passenger jets as freighters to get goods around the world in a matter of hours. The same cannot be said for ships, which are a much slower form of transport. There are enough container ships in service to handle the world's freight needs. This, plus the cruise ship's inability to carry containers, means that using cruise ships as freighters simply doesn't add up in the current environment. Cruise ships were specifically designed to operate cruise voyages, and so repurposing them has proven to be a more difficult challenge than first thought. So while some cruise ships have returned to cruising, and others have found a use as accommodation ships, for the majority of the ships that are in warm layup at the moment, it's going to be a long wait until they can find a meaningful use again. So do you have an idea as to what cruise ships could be doing rather than just sitting in warm layup? If you've got some thoughts, let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to send my thanks to Andrew Sassoli Walker, a Southampton-based photographer who provides me with access to his fantastic imagery of cruise ships based in Southampton. And also my thanks to Rob Henderson and Doug Kramer for access to their fantastic Henderson and Kramer collection. I've linked to both in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. If you're interested in what else is happening during the 2020 cruise shutdown, check out my COVID and cruising playlist. Thanks again for watching and when it is safe for us to travel again, I hope to see you on board.